Welcome to Victory's Vision Christian Church. We're glad to ha- join us and us join you. Hallelujah. Everybody have a praise for the Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, as we were singing the cross song, the blood the red runs red, that is memorial to us. That's a memorial to us. Tomorrow's Memorial Day. We want to remember those who gave their life for us. Jesus gave his life for us. Soldiers gave their lives for us. Many, many people gave their lives for our freedom. The Lord Jesus said, there's no greater thing than a man lay his life down for his friends. Hmm? Or lay his life down for those. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome. I want to take a few minutes, and I want to do the offering. Amen? Pastor Nancy, come on up a minute. Come on up. Just come on up. Don't be afraid. (laughs) She's a professional talker. Go ahead. He picks on me. Mary Ann, do something. We have friends out there. Heidi and whoever else. We love you. We love you. Anybody from Victory's Vision is supposed to be here this morning. We love you and we hope you're listening. Hi, Nikki. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be great because Pastor John told me it was. I there don't know. you go. I don't there know. you Did go. Did we get papers? No. No papers today. Took a holiday. That's okay. It's going to be great. It always is. This is a great holiday. I don't think they're doing parades, but, you know, just to honor all the men and women that fought for us and lost their lives. And uh, it's a great memorial. We can think of them. Uh, because they're the reasons you're sitting in these churches and you're out there and you're, you have freedom to listen to the word of God. And also because Jesus is Lord of this nation. And it doesn't matter what you hear in the news, God always wins in the end, right? <laughs> so we are one nation under God. You got something to read there? Well, yeah, I did. But I thought I was going. It's okay. Well, uh, this is the offering, so uh, I hope all of you that are listening and been listening to YouTube, because all these talks are up on YouTube, I hope that you will give. Think about this ministry and give to it, because the teachings are excellent. And if you listen to them on a regular basis, put them into your life, and there's plenty to listen to on SoundCloud and YouTube, um, it will change your thinking first, drop down in your heart, and start changing your talking, and then it will change your life. Your for whole the life. Better. Your whole life. And God will restore. Because now you're under the law of life, which was the tree of life. But you have to be born again to enter in. And Pastor John will say that prayer. And if you are out there and you're not born again, please say the prayer. Um, I want to just read a little bit about how God sees us. God is so passionately and deeply in love with you that he gave his only son to be payment for all your sins. Jesus shed blood, has cleansed you, and set you free from the curse of the law. It really is a curse. That curse, it's called the tree of um, the law of sin and death or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's a system you cannot keep. And what it means is you're making judgment about yourself according to what you see, according to your senses. Well, it's going to condemn you and cause all kinds of havoc in your life, in your relationships, in your health. But if you judge yourself by the perfect law of liberty, the law of life in Christ Jesus, you'll have life and life in abundance. abundance. How are you guys doing out there? I love all these people out here. You're the reason you we stand here. No, a little bit more. <laughs> no, I'm not pushing you. I want to read it. I want to know what it is. What Jesus it's shed blood has cleansed you and set you free from the curse of the law and from all punishment. That just changed my whole life to learn all about that. Hope it changes yours. You only have to believe and receive God's love for you to see how greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved you are. Amen. Right, Sydney? Amen. Let's Amen. hear a shout from all you guys. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's, let's pray for the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Your word says, God is able, he's able to do all grace, to give us all grace abundantly. God is able to make all grace abundantly, that we may be sufficient in all things. Remember that. If you're standing for anything, God is able and willing, able and willing to do above and beyond anything you can ask or think to make grace abundant to you. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We receive. Well, tomorrow's Memorial Day. What does that mean? I want to talk about it. Pay close attention to what I'm going to say. Please. Memorial Day. What is it? The greatest honor that we can give is to live a happy, satisfied life that was paid for us. And in that life, you will honor those who paid it. Let me say it again. Everybody listening? Are you listening out there? The greatest honor that we can give is to live a happy, satisfied life that was paid for us. Those that died, they paid a price for us to be happy and satisfied. Amen. Happy and satisfied. In that life, when we do that, when we're happy and satisfied, we'll honor those people. Hmm? This is what the Lord says about this. This is in the English Standard Version, Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 6.3. It says, if a man fathers a hundred children, and in those days, that was a blessing. hundred children, huh? <laughs> blessing, yeah. And lives many years, so that the days of his years are many. But his soul, which is his mind, his will, his emotions. How is your mind? Hmm? How is your will, your emotions? Are you depressed? Are you looking down or are you happy and satisfied with life? But his soul is not satisfied with life's good things, and he also has no burial. I say that a stillborn child is better off than he. Let me read this again, and I'll explain what it's saying to you. If you're going to be depressed, if you're going to be depressed, it's been better you've never been born because you're wasting life. You're wasting it. The people who paid the price for you and me to have liberty and freedom, and Jesus is the biggest one of all. Amen. When you're depressed, you're just sad, complaining, murmuring, what are you doing? You're saying that the price wasn't enough. You're not honoring them. Let me say it again. If a man fathers a hundred children and lives many years, so that the days of his years are many, but his soul is not satisfied with life's good things, and he also has no burial, I say that a stillborn child is better off than he. Ecclesiastes. What does that mean? Hmm? It means you can't be depressed because you're not honoring those who gave their life for you, 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 and me. And you, hmm? You got to honor them by what they paid. By being happy, being satisfied. Oh, I don't have everything. I don't have all the things that are net. Wait on the Lord. Hmm? He's able to make all grace abound that you may be sufficient in all things. If you don't believe that, you're not going to have it. Faith is the energy. Faith is the power. Faith is the connection to God that you're plugging in to receive. Amen? Don't waste what they paid for. That's what it's saying. Don't waste it. As we celebrate Memorial Day, this quote, we come not to mourn our dead soldiers, but to praise them for the price that they paid for us to have liberty. Hmm? To us to have liberty, freedom. Many people died for you. Hmm? Jesus was the biggest one. If you don't honor what they did for you by being happy, by being satisfied with life, you're saying what they did wasn't enough. Never forget the price. Never, never. What's a memorial? Vietnam Memorial. Over 50,000 people died. Something such as a monument or a holiday intended to celebrate or honor the memory of a person or an event. That's a memorial. This one was set up for all those that died to remember them, the price that they paid for liberty and freedom. Hmm? 
Oh, you might say it's foolishness. Oh, that died for nothing. No, no. If it wasn't there, been somewhere else. What is a memorial for? To record a memory. To honor and remember those who gave their lives for freedom. This is the World War II memorial, which took them 50 years or more to 60 years to build. And finally, hmm? we need to never forget the price that was paid for our freedom. This is there at Normandy. What is it? 3,000 people buried, in, guys buried in that cemetery. Most of them were 18 and 19 years old. Hmm? Never knew a marriage. Never held a, their own baby. We as Christians, we need to remember that we have a personal Memorial Day to another who died for us. You remember that? We as Christians need to remember that we have a personal Memorial Day to another who died for us. We need to remember our death. Are you in Christ? You need to remember that you died. Hmm? Someone died for you, and when he died, you died with him. Our burial, our resurrection, done for our freedom, and the price that was paid, paid in full, paid in full, so you never have to be depressed, so you never have to be condemned, so you never have to be without hope. Hmm? Too many Christians are living there without hope. Condemnation, why? Depression, why? Because they're forgetting. They're forgetting the price, and they don't look at the price that was paid for them. They don't understand it. For you, those of you on Facebook, I want to stop and say this. When Jesus died, you died. When he rose, you rose to a new life. What does that mean? You have to accept what he did for you. When you agree with that, what he did for you, what happens? Hmm? You move from darkness to light. You move from death to to life, eternal life, a promise with him, a promise he's always with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say this prayer with me, everybody. Say, Father God, when Jesus died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he rose, I rose. To a new life in Christ. Agree with that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Romans 6, 3 and 4. What does it say? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus was baptized into his death? We were buried together. Therefore, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Hmm? We need to remember our death, our burial, our resurrection, done for our freedom and the price that was paid for that. Without it, we will not have victory in life. We will not walk in the spirit to have that victory. It's up to you. The choice is yours. You can be down in the dumps and look at the natural realm and live in the natural realm, or you're going to be enjoying this life. Hmm? Too many people are worried about everything under the sun. Too many people are fearful about everything. There is no fear in perfect love. God has given us perfect love through Jesus. What does that mean? That means he's not judging you. You ask for wisdom, he gives it liberally, not to say, oh, you little stinker, you didn't do this, huh? He doesn't do that. He says, I love you. I'll take care of you. I'll help you. Hmm? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, that's what's happened to you if you've received Jesus just now. You've been baptized into Christ Jesus. Oh, the physical baptism is a manifestation of to show what's going on in your heart. We have been baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism in death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. You want to walk in newness of life, you've got to be dead to that old realm. Yeah. We as Christians need to remember the price that was paid for us and honor it with spiritual fruit and with faith. Let me say it again. We as Christians need to remember the price that was paid for us and honor that price. Honor that price by developing spiritual fruit and by using your faith in God's unconditional love. Galatians 5, and 23. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there's no law. Hmm? You're not going to be condemned when you walk in the fruit of the Spirit. How do you walk in the fruit of the Spirit? Look at God's love at all the time, all, at all times. Look at that love, not at yourself in the natural realm. The more you look at yourself in the natural realm, you're not going to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit means you're walking by faith in God's unconditional love. The fruit of the flesh is what? Hate, fear, condemnation, guilt. Hmm? Looking at yourself, judging yourself, judging others. That's the fruit of the flesh. You're not in that. You're dead to that. So start looking at who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ. Amen. 1 John 5, 4. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Trusting in his unconditional love. Trusting that what he paid the price for us, that we died when he died. He paid the price for all our sins, past, present, and future. All of them. There's an enemy that wants to steal from you your remembrance, your memorial. The cross is one of the biggest memorials that ever existed. Why? Because Jesus said, when you do communion, do this in memory of me. Remember what happened to you. Remember what happened to you. Remember the price that was paid. God's only son has put you in himself. Think about what he's made us. We're one spirit with the Lord. Huh? You're not the junk you think you are. You've moved from junk to a treasure. Amen. Think about that. Hallelujah. Hmm? The enemy lies to you and is going to say to you, John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, it's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I, Jesus, came to give you life and give it to you in abundance. Too many Christians are out there crying, well, God's got me going through this thing. God's, he's, he's showing me uh, uh, I need to grow, and he's watching how I grow in, in the flesh, and he, he wants to make sure I'm doing everything right. Huh? No, he knows you can't do anything right. So he's put you in Christ. And he, the Father, is looking at the Son. He's the author and perfecter of your faith. He's the one, and the Holy Spirit is the one in you that's going to perfect it. Think about the rest that we can have when the Holy Spirit is guiding us and leading us. What does that mean? Well, I don't know what's going on tomorrow. I, I, this, there's a pandemic going on. There's, there's trouble going on. There's fear going on. What do I do tomorrow? Where do I go? I got laid off from my job. I don't have any money. What am I going to do? I don't know what to do. And what does the Holy Spirit say? Hmm? Wake up to righteousness. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. God has paid a price for you to be his. And that's what is meant by Jesus is Lord. He's Lord over you. Hmm? Those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. We'll suffer if we don't have a personal memorial day. We forget. And too many times we forget it. We go to do something, it's not working, and we forget we forget the price he paid, and we forget to look at him. We forget to look at that love, and what do we do? We look at ourselves. We look at ourselves. We get mad and frustrated with ourselves, so the more we get mad and frustrated with ourselves, we get mad and frustrated with everybody else. Yep. Don't. Don't. It's just the enemy trying to steal from you. Your, mem your memorial. How dead are you? Well... Pastor John, I, I'm about 60% dead, and every day that goes, I'm dying a little bit more. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're dying all right. It's time to wake up to the new life. We'll not walk in the new man or think like him, but we'll focus on the old me. Oh, poor old me. <gasps> poor old me. You never said that, right? Huh? <laughs> We will not walk in the new man or think like him, but we'll focus on the old me and live in him instead of what was bought for us, what was paid for us. Think of what he paid. What did he pay? Huh? His life. And all those soldiers forever, men and women and whatever, they died for you, for liberty. For liberty. Huh? Some of us forget that we're dead in Christ. The greatest memorial right there. We begin to suffer 
being alive to this world. If we forget, we begin to suffer being alive to this world. The care, the condemnation, the fear, and all the junk that goes with it starts to activate in us. In us. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Who can help me? The great counselor. huh? The Holy Spirit who knows everything. He's going to help you. Look to him. Turn to him. Hand in hand. Walk in life with him. Hmm? James 1, 23 and 24. For if anyone be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or mirror, for he beholds himself and he goes away straight away and forgets what manner of man he was. What does that mean? Hmm? How do you see yourself? You see yourself in the flesh? Most of us do. Most of the time. We should see ourselves in Christ most of the time. Or almost all of the time. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You're one spirit with the Lord. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me and you. Hmm? Than he who lives in the world. How to have a personal memorial day? How to have it? Remember your baptism. It was your funeral. How was it? You went to your own funeral. Hmm? If you accepted Jesus as your Lord, you've been to your funeral. You know, my son has my name. My dad had my name. My dad is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. He was in the service 25 years. He had the right to get that. There's nothing like going to a gravestone and you see your name on that gravestone. I told my son, take a look, Johnny. What do you think? Your name's right there. Hmm? Your funeral is already passed. The Bible says now we've passed from, from death to life. Amen. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. What about the great throne judgment? Weren't you judged at the cross for all the works? And you were found guilty. And Jesus paid the price. And what does that mean? Huh? That means you're over here. You're not to be judged anymore. Why? Well, Pastor John, there's all kinds of things through the Old Testament that says God's going to do this and do this and do this to you. Well, he did it to Jesus on the cross. Wake up and find out what happened to Jesus. Too many Christians, they don't know. Oh, well, he died for my sins. Very flippantly. Hmm? Remember your baptism. It was your funeral. Some of you probably heard of Catherine Kuhlman. If you've read any of her stuff, she was... A, a healing evangelist. I mean, she had words of knowledge, and, and she would say, I don't know why some are healed and some are not. I don't know. They believed the love of God is what it was. Hmm? She goes, I remember the very street where Catherine Kuhlman died. And then a the guy named Kenneth Hagin taught about faith. Hmm? He talked about when he died and was going to hell. But, Lord, I go to the church. I go to the church. I'm a member of the church. Lord, I go to the church. I'm a member of the church. <sighs> I didn't help him. He was falling in his vision or whatever he was feeling and seeing. And what did he finally say? Lord, save me. And what happened? The Lord saved him. Gave him a ministry for, you know, 70-some years. Oh, hallelujah. Remember where and when you died and were born again. If you're not, remember, today is May 24th, 2020. We all said that prayer. If you don't think you've ever said it, you just said it today. Those that listen to me on Facebook, we all may have different days, you know, some longer than others. Remember the day that the old you died. Remember where and when you died and were born again. Read what is on your headstone. What is on your headstone, huh? A Christian's headstone should read Galatians 2.20. You know, on a headstone it says 19 so-and-so or whatever so-and-so, dash, and then the day, that dash right there, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It's Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That dash is what we're living in right now. We're living in it right now. And what are we supposed to do with that? Huh? You're supposed to honor those and remember those who paid the price for you. And especially the price that Jesus paid for you.
Remember when you're depressed. Remember when you're fearful. Remember when you don't know, who's going to make the next move? What am I supposed to do? Remember that. Remember the price was paid that you would have the happiness, you would have the joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength, not depression. Huh? Depression is my strength. I like being sad. I like being frustrated. I like no peace. No, you don't. Huh? The joy of the Lord is where strength is. Huh? And you know what the Bible says too? It look, God looks at us and says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. What does that mean? When you're frustrated, you're in the corner. You ever been in a corner for something? You know, you're standing there in the corner. Lord, what do I do? I can't go this way. I can't go this way. I can't go this way. Oh, what do I do, Lord? What do I do? Hmm? I call that the Red Sea position. Red Sea position. Remember the Jews going to cross the Red Sea? Hmm? Here behind them, they looked behind them, and what did they see? They saw Pharaoh's army coming at them. You got the bill collectors calling you? You got the doctor yelling, screaming at you? And what's in front of them? The Red Sea. Well, it looks like impossible. I don't know how to fix this situation. I don't know what to do. Huh? What did the Lord tell Moses to tell them? Huh? Lift up your rod. That's the word of God. Lift up the word of God. Lift up the word of God. Go forward. I can't go forward. Don't you see what I see, Lord? Boogeyman's. Boogeyman's. Red Sea in front of me. You want me? What do I do? Lift up the word and look at the word. As they went forward, God did the rest. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. I can't believe it, Lord. I can't believe. But he can. He can believe it. Hmm? No, no one after the flesh, especially yourself. No one after the flesh, especially yourself. What does that mean? How to have a personal Memorial Day? No, no one after the flesh, especially yourself. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, especially yourself. Don't look at yourself under the natural man. That's not you. That junk died. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I'm trying to drag it in, with, but it won't go through the cross. My depression won't go through the cross. My fear won't go through the cross. What do I do with it? Leave it there at Jesus' feet. Hmm? Nail it with those nails that are in his feet. Huh? Because they're just laying there. He's not there. Neither are you. From now on, regard, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, 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 if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Hallelujah, I'm a new creation. Mm. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You all have a ministry of reconciliation. Hey, out there, you people on the street, I want to show you something. God wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to be reconciled. He don't want you to look at yourself and faults and mistakes and sins. He wants you to see his unconditional love for you. Many do not believe God's love is unconditional. And it's sad to say that Christians are like that, a lot of them. Well, if I'm good enough, then he'll answer my prayers. If I fix it enough in my life and I try to do what is good, huh? No, no, hmm? you can't. He's reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, not counting the sins against them. A trespass is broken law. Everyone was under the Law of sin and death, the truth of the knowledge of good and evil. This is right, this is wrong, according to the natural realm. And you missed it. And you condemn yourself. That's sin. That's trespass. He didn't hold that against you because he paid the price for all of that. All of it. Every single bit of it. Forever. But what do I do? How do I get forgiveness for what I did yesterday? You walk in the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit and you recognize what Jesus did for you. And that will just fall away. Because you'll turn towards him, which is called repenting, turning towards him with a new mind, with a new mind, with a new vision, with a new look ahead, his love. Hmm? 
entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be recognized, be reconciled to God. And I'm saying that to everybody out there on Facebook. If you're not reconciled to God, you don't know what you have. You don't know what happened at the cross. Christianity is of no value to you yet, but it can be. The price has been paid for you. Past, present, and future. The price is paid in full. You want to honor God? You want to honor the people who've died for you? Hmm? Be happy. Be full of joy. Full of joy. Full of joy. Let no problem steal your joy. None. None. Amen? For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Put your victory's vision glasses on. Put them on. Everybody got them on? Amen. I sure hope so. Let me get them out. <laughs> get the scratches out of there, huh? Seeing yourself the way God sees you through the cross. God told me if I wore those all the time in my life, that's what he sees. That's the way he sees me, through the cross, through the blood of Jesus. He didn't condemn me. When you got these on, he's not condemning you. He's not judging you. He sees what Jesus did for you, and he says, I love you. He's bragging on you to the devil, and the devil's jealous. Hmm? Okay, that went by. Victory's Vision. You want to hear more? Go to www.victoriesvision.org. You can also go to PayPal on the last page and give an offering. It's an offering by faith. If you can't do it by faith, you're living over there. Hmm? I'm not telling you that if you don't give, you're not going to be blessed. I'm not going to say that. You're living in fear. Don't live in fear. You serve God, not money. My God shall supply all your needs according to his glorious riches by Christ Jesus. Yes. Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. Amen? Amen? Let's take a few minutes. I want to pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your unconditional love. Thank you for it, Father. Give me wisdom how to pray for those that are here on Facebook and those that are listening to this message on YouTube and those that are here now. Give me wisdom. Confirm your word, Father. Confirm your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is what I feel the Lord is saying to all of us. I am your light. That will light up your future. That will light up your path. I am your light. It's in your hand, and it's in your mouth, and it's in your heart. Turn it on. By making a decision, I'm going to walk by faith in God's love. I'm going to walk by faith in that. Don't be fearful. Don't be condemned. Don't just shrug off what happened to all the people that died for you, and especially what Jesus did. People want liberty. Hmm? The Son wants to make us free. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. What's the truth? That Jesus died for you. Hmm? It's not a temporary thing. It's for sure. God loves you. God cares about you. The more you focus on it, the more, listen to me closely, the more you focus on the love of God and what happened to you at the cross, the great exchange, you laid your life down, and he gave you his life. The more you focus on that, the understanding of that will get greater and greater in your life. The closer you will move to God himself, the closer to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the, they will change your life. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me. I listen to him. He says, I can't do it myself. I listen to him. Wasn't he God? Well, he laid that down and walked as a man, and he showed us what to do. Hmm? Trust in the Father's love. Trust in that the Son paid the price for you. Past, present, and future. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Nancy, come on up. I want to say a few things. <laughs> that was so good. Was that good? Woo! That was really good. Drop it down in our spirits, Lord, and let us be doers of it, right? Yeah. And all of you out there, too. That, that was just excellent. I, I just have one word, and it just popped up. 
I was talking to a friend here, a sister in the Lord, Pam, and we were talking out in the lobby, and I was just, she was saying how, you know, Pam, you say it better than me. Can you, would you come up and say it? Well, she just, because I believe this is also what a lot of Christians do, and also people who are maybe unsaved, but you're saved now. Just how Pam put it so good, I think you do a better job than me. I just said that, um, you know, I'm the one Leslie gave the testimony on the cancer, that I'm healed. And bottom line, um, I know I do it on occasion, and we all do it. You know, we give it to God, and then we take it back. And then we give it to God, and then we take it back. With my cancer, I gave it to God. I never took it back. And I do take stuff back, but not back. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And if you just did that five minutes ago, you took it back from God. I can do it better than you. That's okay. God's mercy endures for. Amen. Thank God. I live on that scripture. So give it back to him and leave it there. <laughs> and uh, whatever it is, if it's an illness, a child, um, there's a lot of problems now. If it's a fear, if it's depression, whatever it is, just give it back to him and fill your mind full of good things. Whatever is good, lovely, pure, fill your mind with that. And there's no better than the teachings over here at Victory's Vision. Right, gang? Right, <laughs> So I want to encourage you to do that. I also want to encourage you to take communion at home and remember your memorial, like Pastor John said. We love you. We thank you for tuning us in. Please go to our website and listen to more teachings. Can't get enough teachings, right, guys? Right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. This is Pastor John Morak with Victory's Vision Christian Church. To understand his teaching, you need to be born again. Jesus replied, Verily I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. That means you won't understand it either. 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. How to be born again? Romans 10. 9 through 10 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with the heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. You can listen to other teachings that we have on victoriesvision.org. That's www.victorysvision.org. And if you'd like to donate to this ministry, you can donate on our website. Thanks for listening.